The single greatest predictor of a healthy gut microbiota is the diversity of plants in one's diet. Diversity and richness of the gut microbiota. The diversity of the microbiome appears to have an important association with the BMI, obesity, and arterial function. Now we introduce to you heart disease. Just about three months ago, one of my favorite research centers in the world, Hebrew University, reported something I've been waiting for for decades. After 50 young years old, 90% of people in the West have periodontal disease. That's an overgrowth of bad guys in the mouth. I'll repeat it. Nine out of 10 people after the ripe young age of 50 have overgrowth of bad guys in the mouth, bad microbes in the mouth. What they did is they looked at four major stage four cancers, liver, pancreatic, bone, and lung. And they took the cancer cells out and actually discovered the DNA of the bad guys from the mouth. Now that doesn't mean it's 100% the cause of the cancer, but what it absolutely without question means, in part, it created those cancers. There's evidence, once again. And when you alter this function, it's outrageous. It's overwhelming research suggests that plant-based diets form a greater diversity of these healthy bacteria within you. A positive association between local microbe richness and long-term fruit and vegetable intake is confirmed. I'll repeat it again. Reference the bottom of what I'm saying here. There's nothing I'm saying I can't show you is in current and valid and incredibly important research today. So we now know that why we have one third less in the West, fancy people doing fancy things, clean as a dog, by the way, is because we're not consuming the plants like all of the primal people do, the more natural living people do around the globe. The first time I saw this was about 10 years ago where they compared the Italians in Europe, who by the way, have the healthiest microbiome, they only have about a 22 to 23% less than Germans would have, or Swedes would have, or Danes would have, or et cetera, or French would have, to the Africans, who, by the way, have the healthiest microbiome. Africans, the original people who most often in the tundra, in the deserts, eat the way that their ancestors did a long, long time ago, basically have two forms of bacteria that they don't find anywhere else on the planet Earth. But by the way, the Italians, which are the closest to the Africans, because the Africans migrated, specifically the Ethiopians, and a lot of the Southern Italians have genetic mixture with this, by the way, are the closest, and they're down about one quarter compared to the rest of us that are down to about one third. Raw and plant-based. Now, I know you're going to hear a lot about plant-based and cooking's fine and all that, I respect and honor the people who have taken you to that very first step. We're going to take you to where we've been now for seven decades in a research setting, working with the sickest people on the planet Earth. And what's elating me is now, after doing this research to present this to all of you around the world today, I have even a better understanding than I did a few months ago as to why this has been incredibly effective, well beyond a cooked plant-based diet. Whole plant foods have protective effects, favoring the growth of beneficial fiber degradating bacteria in the colon. So how many of you notice when you eat salad, you eat raw food, you get a lot of gas? You don't have the bacteria within your intestinal tract to break it down like the Africans would or like your ancestors would have. Doesn't mean you can't digest it as doctors tell you. No, you can't digest food when it's cooked. There's little to nothing to digest and the fiber is neutered. Now let's go back again. 80% of your immune system, 90% of your psychology 
depends upon healthy bacteria being fed by plants. And once you cook them, the pile of cellulose mush does not provide the enzymatic activity that I showed you in a slide about 22 minutes ago. That literally showed you that you need the enzymes to come and break it down, bring the messaging up, the entire neuron system to the brain and back down from the brain to the body to make the body and the brain function the way it was meant to because every single creature on earth except humans in nature consume 100% raw diet. We're the only species that cook our food. And our founder after healing stage four cancer back in 1950s, early 1950s, got it. Not because she was a great intellectual, because she was a great instinctualist who saved her life by doing what she saw as a peasant girl in Eastern Europe. When people got sick, they ate raw plants, they ate raw herbs, they ate raw food. And how did they learn that? Not because they went to some intellectual, because they saw animals do it. You saw your dog do it. You saw your cat do it. But we're so arrogant, we don't do what dogs and cats do. That's why we're the sickest species on earth and we're dying at a rate that has never been paralleled in the history of the human race. One step more, there's a larger species kill off today than there ever has been in the history of the planet Earth because we don't honor the mother that we choose to live on. We don't respect the biology. That's a gift. It's a temporary gift, as Chief Seattle said. Respect the earth. We temporarily have it, so we pass it down to our children and their children. What do we do? We destroy it. We rape it. We pull the blood out of it. And then we wonder why we're sick. And humanity's close to demise. Shame on us. And if you're really serious about being healthy and can take the little bit of gas and pain and suffering it does in the early days when you consume an organic, raw, plant-based diet, you're now going to feel a level of health that never, ever has come your way before. Polyphenols. These are one of the magic elements that you find in plant-based foods that, by the way, are completely neutered and gone when you cook the food. Our plant metabolites, you know what that means? You metabolize things. Well, plants do too. And remember photosynthesis? Well, that's a metabolism process. And increase the bifo bacteria within your body and the lactobacteria within your body, which provide anti-pathogenic. What are pathogens? Cancer. Bad guys are that. So now we know that elements that are in plants that are here hundreds and hundreds of millions of years before humans showed up, we're just sort of the new guys on the block here, literally were programmed to heal diseases that didn't even exist. Some of them 100 years ago. Well, think about that for a minute. And anti-inflammatory effects, as well as cardiovascular protection. Wow. Now I know all the... Alternative heart docs are all geared up and correct in saying, don't eat eggs, don't eat fish. I'll talk about this in detail. I'll give you real science on it next week on Saturday at one o'clock. Uh, and I honor and respect what they're saying. But if you really want the medicinal protection, the plant-based protection that they promise you but can't deliver because it's cooked food, you better start considering eating a lot more raw food. Another thing that's really important are nuts and seeds. The more we look at nuts and seeds, by the way, the more exciting these become. So you have a bifo bacteria that comes from nuts and seeds. And remember, the, the two nuts you want to avoid because they're not really that healthy for your cashews, which in great part are cooked in the extraction process, even if they're called raw uh, afterward, and peanuts. And watch out here in North America and the United States specifically, because your government started to realize that uh, there was something magical in, in almonds. And way back 100 years ago, a guy called Edgar Casey told us this. He said, eat five almonds a day if you want to prevent and help to reverse cancer. And that's called abscisic acid. You know it on the street as laetrile. 
And so as soon as the government started to realize that this was an upswing, people were eating a lot more almonds, they made sure they were irradiated. So you're gonna to have to found inventive ways as we do here at Hippocrates to find raw almonds. So the healthy diet will include these seeds, sesame seeds, things like you know, flax seeds, things like poppy seeds, things like chia seeds. And when you sprout them, when you germinate them, they're digestible. Any of those seeds I just mentioned, your body can't break them down. So that process of where the enzyme comes in and takes and breaks down the shell, you're going to help it by sprouting. All those little seeds only take soaking for about six hours and germinating, spread them out on a paper towel, spray them with a sprayer from the, from the dollar store with good water twice a day. And in two days, you're going to have little tails on them. And now they become about 18 to 22 times more digestible, and they have about eight times more nutrients, and the fats become essential fatty acids. So these are polyunsaturates that are, you're going to find in there. And you find a lot in walnuts. You know, we always go to walnuts, walnuts, but, you know, pistachios that are raw have it. Pecans. I've just recently started to eat pecans for the first time in decades. Incredibly good for you. Macadamia, raw macadamia nuts. And there's so many varieties, not pine nuts, boy, are they great for you. And all of these actually help that bacteria count in the intestinal tract. Now, unlike uh, a salad or a lettuce or a green that comes into the body, gives that cellulose life form, the enzymatically rich, water rich life form, it comes in and comes out rapidly where the nuts and the seeds germinated ones that are becoming plants again, literally stay there much longer and provide a fertile soy, soil for that healthy bacteria to grow in. <music>